Hey guys, uh, Terry from Smooth Watch up here. Um, right, I don't usually build aircraft, so I'm not going to do a build video series on this. But I, I won this in a new models thing, um, one of their Monday Monday shows. Um, oh, a good few months ago now. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. I haven't actually built any aircraft for over thirty years, and I quite like this one, this SU twenty five K. Uh, of the North Korean Air Force. So yeah, um, so I've been doing my little bit of, now apologies about the state of the bench because I'm in the middle of doing stuff. So this is kind of like a wee, wee vlog sort of kind of update on on the kit and how I'm finding it. Um, so it's made by a company, I'll just, oh that's my, I'm in the middle of doing my Peterbilt as well. Um, it's made by a company, a Czech is a vacuum company, a Czech company. Let me see if I can get to the beginning here. Called. Uh, let's see if I can get this. Kovoza Vode Prostjov. So it's a Suko SU 25K frog foot. <laughs> Somebody actually put an interesting comment up because I've, I've put some pictures up obviously on my um, Smooth Workshop page. Uh, <laughs> Somebody commented and said, if you had a whole fleet of these frog foots, would they be called frog feet? Debate. <laughs> so anyway, it's, what I'll say is the instructions on this plane are a little bit vague uh, in places. Um, yeah, so a bit vague in places. Um, slightly different from any kit that I've done before because... Most kits that I've built have little locating tabs and stuff like that. This doesn't really have them. Um, it's not the best fitting of kits, and some of the instructions, you've just kind of got to guess what you're doing with it. Um, but I thought I would share it with you anyway. Um, there's going to be a lot of stencils and stuff, so this is a colour pattern that I am going to do. Is this one. I uh, quite like it. It's a North Korean one. So what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to pop up four, four pictures that I've done my research on um, just to let you see it looks like a lightly weathered plane so I'm just going to start popping them up just now so here's the first one okay and another one and then there's one in the cockpit and then a final one now the interesting thing on this, and I don't know if you guys can help me on this, is I've pretty much figured out all the colours that I need, back to me. Um, but the undercarriage, the, the, the bays that the wheels go into, are a yellowy orange colour. And it doesn't tell you in here, none, yeah, so I'll probably have to make a custom colour, but if anybody's done one of these, it would be nice to know um, what colour you did yours and stuff. So yeah, they do quite a lot of planes and stuff. So this is what I'm working on. So it's not going to be a step-by-step -step build or anything. Yes, I've started it. Yes, I'm working on electricity and stuff at the moment. So I'll, I'll just run through sort of where I'm at. I am going to be adding um, lighting into the kit. So uh, I've, I've got, I have found out through doing some research and some help from John that the plane has a, a, f a few navigation lights. I mean... We're just going to have a... Oops, I'll try not to break it, Terry. The kit itself... Okay. Doesn't have any... Look, well, it's got one locating pin at one end and one at the other. The pins and holes. Right, I'm used to kits where there's, there's lots of them, but then I've not built a kit for 30-odd years. Um, so it's kind of pretty much... That's the only bit on the kit that has any locating tabs. The rest of it is pretty much line it up by eye and hope for the best. So it does actually go together quite well. It all lines up reasonably well. Um, what doesn't line up on it are things like um, the detail on here. don't know if you'll catch it, but that round detail, it's out of line. Um, and some of the lines are out of line and stuff like that. So um, the whole kit's like that uh, in various different places. It's all out of line, uh, so it needs a bit of rescribing and stuff like that. So obviously, I'm I'm putting wiring in, so I'm going to have engine pods and wings and a tailpiece. Now, normally when you start my kit, the first bit you would do is 
Yeah, of course, you would do all your cockpit and everything. I've only got it in primer at the moment. So as I say, this isn't a build video, but just kind of catch up and where I'm at. So this is in primer at the moment. So, <laughs> yes, I did swear at the photo etch and stuff like that. Yeah, it's standard what comes with the kit. Okay, uh, it does come with a little bit of photo etch. It does come with um, the... I keep calling it a dashboard, but it's not it's edged a bit panel. Um, it's not overly detailed or anything. I've still got to do... There's a wee bit with the foot pedals in it, and they have little straps over, which are photo etch, and uh, you probably won't see them, but, uh, yeah, I'll be doing them. Let's see, they're up here. So it comes with a wee, a wee fret of photo etch, and it comes with masks, and it's all right, actually. It's a no bad wee kit. So I've got the seat belts there to do, obviously after the chair's painted. I've already got the dash in that taken away, the dash, the instrument binnacle. Uh, because it's actually a three-layered thing. I've got it in a bag somewhere. I can't even remember where I've put it as yet. Um, this is the other version. And these are the two wee photo etch frets that fold over to for the straps around the feet. But yeah, it's, it's all right. It's not bad. Uh, the biggest problem I've had with the photo etch is not bending it or anything like that. I'm used to working with metal, is it? <laughs> my glues have kind of went off. My super glues have went off. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> what else have I got? Right, I've got... So basically I've started off by taping everything together to see how it all fits. And because um, there's a nav light on each side of the wing, I've drilled, there's a little egg-shaped part clear that goes over here. So I've drilled a hole in through the wing pod um, where the nav light is. So this is a, a starboard wing, the right-hand wing, so that'll be green. I've already made the, oh, see if I can get the wiring out for it. I've already made the LED up for it, um, like so, so I've soldered it up myself, I don't know, have I got green two point, I'm trying to think what voltage it runs at, where's my tester, just to let you see how bright these wee things are, All right, here's, my here's my tester, um, right that's on, so I'll go for the, the higher resistance on this side, oh don't get my camera down so you can see what I'm on about. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing about all the electronic circuits. This is the stuff that I do, but I mean, I've, I've wired this up myself. So this is a uh, a green LED. Uh, I'm trying to remember the size of it. It's a, a 1206 uh, chip size. Obviously, I've soldered all these leads on myself. That's a red one. Uh, so that's what I've put on the, the starboard side that I've already integrated into the wing. So the chip size on this one is 1206, and they run between... 2 and 2.2 .2 volts um, a lot of people are asking about LEDs and stuff, I mean they just come as a bag of let me see if I've got I've got other ones here this is not going to be a heavily intensive LED type video but um, or electricity one but I mean here's a bag here this is one of the smaller ones, this is an 0603 type LED which is very 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 small when you compare it to the size of the 1206's um, let's see if I can get something else in Right, there's a 1206. So that's that's an 0603 type LED. Again, the important thing when you're buying these is you need to know the voltage ratings. Yellows and reds are typically 2 to 2.2 volts, and it runs at 20 milliamps. Now, this is a slightly bigger chip size, easier to work with. Um, and this is the one that I've actually soldered up a pile of them, um, pre-wired them. This is how they come in the strip. Um, and this is a 1206 style. Uh, it runs at 3 to 3.2 volts, unlike a lot of greens that run at uh, a lower voltage. So I need to remember that that runs at 3 to 3.2 volts. Um, so actually, I'll keep that bag out because that's handy, because the reds are running at 2.2. .2. So I've made myself a wee tester up here. It's basically just, all that's in there is 9 volt battery supply, plus and the minus come in, and I've got them wired through a switch. I've got two resistors. Right, I've got a 330 ohm and a 390 ohm. Uh, the 331 is for checking single 3 volt rated LEDs, and the 390 is so that I can check single 2 volt rated LEDs. Um, and it's just a matter of where did I put that green one? Sorry for waffling. I've not really put content up on my channel for a wee while, so I thought I would just give you a wee. It's a wee bit of a, a wee bit of a bite, a wee bit of a. 
see what I'm up to. So, right, I'm going to go plus and minus. So, uh, if I remember rightly, uh, the orange is the plus and the green is a minus because I always put the darker colour as the minus. Let's see if I could get this to light up. Will it light up? Or will I have to? Right, I don't know if you can see how bright that is. All right, let me get my camera down a bit again. Right, so here's my wee tester. Now, I may have to adjust the brightness on this by a different value of uh, resistor. But let's get this. You see how bright that is? Right, so that is going to be my starboard light. It's a nice size and it will be getting fitted um, in the end of the wing, okay, um, underneath, inside, so that the centre part of the... I don't can I get this in the middle of the camera? Let's get back up to some light. So the centre part of this SMD LED, right? See if we can get the light to focus. Da, 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 there. There we go. Right. That's the back end. That's the back end. That's the front end. So the centre part will be under this hole. Uh, the same as of what I've done with the red one on the other side. Now I also want to put landing lights in these. Now as standard, um, they're retracted. All you get is a round outer disc, and a clear part goes in. And what happens is in flight when it comes down it pops down in a little pod. So where's the one I've done earlier? So here's the one that I've done earlier. Um, what I've done is I've scratch built um, with a tiny, tiny little LED in it, a nano micro LED. The size of the micro LED in white is 0402 type. So that's a chip type. They really are tiny. They're only about one millimeter by one millimeter. Um, yeah, so again, apologies about the mess of the bench, but um, as you can see, uh, what, I've, what I've had to do, because obviously normally it's in the up position, I have scratch built out a little bit of polypipe, a wee bit of plastic card, and an LED, uh, of what the light would look like when it drops down, when it comes into land. Let's bring the light up a bit. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, so there's that bit. Um, and then the light comes up through the wing on the end there so that's white Whoa. that's white landing light and uh, that's red because that's a port so those wires run down inside the wing here um okay so i've had to i've had to take them down inside there make drill holes and everything through i've got the uh, the engine and let's see if we can catch this in the light the right way so you can see the fan away in there i don't know if you can see it just catch it in the light there's a fan away down in there it's basically the same as what this is. Um, there's a fan down there, and there's one at the back. All I've done at the moment is pre-prepped them with some, uh, what I call, Ushi van der Rossen um, steel buffing powders. Because it's real easy for me to touch those up once I get it in the, in the aircraft. So um, I've got that bit done. Sorry for the camera wiggling about all over the place. Yeah, so basically all I've been doing is, because I'm wiring up, as I was saying earlier, I'm jumping about a bit. Normally you would start on the cockpit and you would, you know, this is your cockpit and then you would take your, I'm just trying to find all my parts now. Uh, you would take your um, front wheel bay, which would sit in there. Again, it's not really marked on this. It's a bit of a faff and a fiddle to try and figure out where it goes. So the, the front undercarriage bay would go in there. Um, I did have the wheels kicking about as well for testing. There. Now the other thing is, there's supposed to be two landing lights that sit on the front of this as well. Uh, so I'm going to have to scratch build them. I've not really got photo reference, but I, I think it sits on the top part of here. So I've got run wires up for that, and the, that obviously sits in there. Um, in that section, and then the cockpit. Oops, the seat's falling out. Sits kind of up and round about there. Right? So normally you would spray all the inside of the cockpit, paint and detail all your cockpit up, put your fuselage halves together, then start doing your wings and your engines. I'm having to do everything back to front because everything, I've got to put wiring in that in here. 
So what I'm actually doing is I'm building this part together first, the wing, uh, getting all the wiring in, check it's all working. Um, I'm having to, obviously you can see bits of black on there, basically what I do is I painted primer over it, made sure the edges are all all right and sanded and that, rescribed what I needed to rescribe. The ends on this are particularly bad and you've got to re-rivet them and stuff, so doing all the rescribing and re-riveting sort of stuff. Um, and then you've got to bond them the first half of, there is it, this engine, engine pod, this is one for the other side. Now you can physically, you know, just pop that in afterwards. But the problem is, um, I've still got to run wires through there and drill all that out. Um, and I wouldn't be able to pass the wires over. So I'm having to do it in such a way, when I'm building it together, that the wing goes onto this half first, get the wires over, I then... Um, glue in that, that the, the jet engine itself, pull the wires through this part, glue the two halves together, and then obviously as you can see some of the markings that I've done already, and this isn't pre-shading, this is me um, making marks for, for scribing in that. So I've started filling it with um, Mr. Primer Surface or 1000, uh, and I'll keep going over it and keep going over it so that I'm not sanding away all the detail. Um, the wing roots aren't that bad, to be fair, on the top. Um, a wee bit of uh, work on them. And they're not too bad, the, the engine pod's not too bad, but there's a lot of lines in that here that's I'm going to need to be careful with, uh, that I need to build up and sand and build up and sand and rescribe so I don't lose it all. Um, the actual intake is horrendous. Um, yeah, that's all supposed to be flush, so that'll need built up. Um, it's not too bad under here, I've already done a lot of sanding, but again, it's all rescribing and filling, and uh, under underneath here, trying to get that looking better without taking all the rivet detail out, because I really don't want to re-rivet under there, and then obviously rescribing and rescribing, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, now, on the actual plane, so what you've got is, uh, I've, I've told you about the left-hand um, side, left-hand wing, has a red light and a white landing light, okay? And then the right-hand wing has a green one, which I showed you working, which is uh, going to go inside the wing. And obviously I've, I've scratch-built the other little wing landing light. That'll be going on the other wing. Uh, and I'll be doing the same again, I'll have to build that up you know, in stages and fill it and scribe it and all that sort of thing and build up this one and then this will eventually go on to I'll just move that there this will eventually go onto this body yeah uh, I didn't see the point of putting all the pylons on just now for the weapons because I'm going to be handling it, moving it about, sanding all the bits um, as I say, I'm not an expert in aircraft I haven't done one for over 30 years but I'm using a little bit of... Uh, what I would call common sense. So obviously I'm not going to, I'm not actually going to install or glue this part just now, but just to let you know kind of where I'm going, is all these wires will pass through this hole here that I have uh, had to cut out the body. So it's just giving you an idea when you're working with LEDs, if you've not used LEDs before, kind of the thought process uh, behind what you're going to have to do to get them into the kit. Now, obviously, I've got some heat shrink on there, so I'll need to be careful when I wiggle those bits through. Wiggly, wiggle, wiggly, wiggle. You will, you will comply. Come on, sure you go. There's one. Apologies as if this isn't very clear on the camera. I'm uh, trying to fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Some of these wires are quite fine. Right, so obviously what I've done is I've drilled an extra hole there um, for that to go through. So the next stage, once I've cleaned all this up, is... I can line or try and line this part of the engine up with the body. Now, as I say, there's no pins on it. There's no locating tabs. So the only thing I've got as a guideline on here is this undercarriage bay. Um, as kind of, that's where you've got to kind of line it up roughly. And then I've got to kind of make sure it's kind of roughly lined up there. So it's a bit of a faff, yeah, 
but I'm going to have to build the plane this way and then do the same on the other side and pull the two halves together because I've got to put all my wiring in here. So, right, so I've got this wiring. So what other wiring have I got? I'll just lay this down. Other things I've had to consider. Now, the tail, play, tail plane, rudder section on this. Now, this little bump here is actually a bit fibre optic. But on the actual kit's plastic, that's what it came. It came as a little sticky out bit of plastic. So you have a certain bit of a, a tube that sticks out and then you have a white uh, pulsing nav light uh, on the back. So I've done, I've got pictures on my, my page about it. A wee bit of fettling to get some fibre optic through there. Obviously that will then, let's see if I can, because I've made some mark, markings and stuff. So imagine that wing's on. Um, I've had to cut through in the body here. Um, so that, that fibre optic will come through into the body and then inside the body I will uh, affix a small nano LED and heat shrink it to the end of there so that that pulses away. Um, so I've got to allow for that and that going through the hole. Next thing I've got to consider is I need to power this up. So obviously you can imagine I've got, um, there's my cockpit sitting in there and all that sort of thing, right? The other thing about this is it's a tail setter. Um, so naturally, when all the wheels are on, it's got a tendency to sit on its back wheels. So I've got to think about nose weight as well. Um, so, the way I'm kind of thinking about doing it is, I could have done... I'm only running, right, one, two, same on the other side, three, four. That's four LEDs on the wings. Then I've got two wheel landing lights going on the front uh, suspension strut. So that's five, six. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and a pulsing strobe. So that's seven LEDs. I'm not going to be using a lot of current, so I'm thinking about using, just using the CR2032 uh, coin cell batteries. Now, the problem with these is they don't carry a lot of current, um, which a lot of people take advantage of because you can put them in without resistors, but it's not good practice because uh, resistors limit the flow of the current, which can fry things um, I can, I'm either going to this is what I'm practicing on my board here at the moment I can either there's two different t ways of wiring this I can wire these two in parallel so that it's still sitting at 3.2 volts but I've got twice the current available because there's twice the capacity of batteries the other way I can wire it is I can daisy chain them and link positive to negative and put them in what they call wiring in series. What that'll do is that'll give me six volts to work with. It means I'll need to use resistors to pull the voltage down, but it means that I can tune the resistors more to give me brighter effects on the 3 to 3.4 volt LEDs. So this is where I'm trying to decide what to do and this is where I have got my breadboard sitting at. So what, I, what I've worked out at the moment is that um, I have taken the landing bay uh, where the wheel, uh, the landing bay, the, the, the front nose gear bay. Sorry, I don't know all the terminology. I'm not a plane builder normally. So this is where your front, oh God, it's spinning on me. This is where the front nose gear goes, right? It goes in that two holes there. Right, so that's where that sits. Sits at the front of the plane. Now, I've also got to remember that I didn't really want to put this nose gear on because it's all going to be painted and faffed about. But I've also got to allow getting a couple of uh, landing lights in there as well. So what I've decided to do, because this is all going to be hidden up inside the body of the plane, right, like that, is this is going to be my on-off switch. Okay, so it's a small uh, that I can use, you know, like a little pin or something to, you know. So this is what I call a small latching switch, which you won't really see. Once by the time of the landing gears in, you won't see the small latching switch, and that's on and that's off. And that's all that does. Now, um, to try and keep some of the weight over the front nose wheel, sorry if I'm going on a bit, because it's tail heavy, what I've actually done is I have cut and hot glued and shaped in one of these batteries already. Now, unfortunately, if the battery does go flat, then all my lights are going to go out. Yeah. 
I could probably cut out that wee section and replace that battery. That's fine, but do you know what? I'm, the only time this is going to be lit up is when I finish it, I do my reveal video, and if a friend comes round to, to see the kit, these batteries don't leak, so I'm not worried about buttoning them up in the kit and having to replace them. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So what I've actually done is incorporated this little coin cell, CR2032, in the wheel bay uh, at the back of the switch, and this is all hot glued in. Okay? Um, so... What, I've got two pounds on there, that's a negative tab, right, that's a positive, I'll lead that on to the other battery, and this is where I haven't decided yet whether they're going parallel or in series, Some it does have advantages, so that's going to sit in there, so obviously I've got to get the cockpit in there, and I'm thinking the second battery can sit roughly about there, right, cockpit's going to be in there and that's going to be fine so I'm going to have two batteries in there which is more than enough power I'm probably going to run them at, uh, in series at um, at uh, 6 volts ok, only because I've got a wee chip in that to go in there and I'm probably going to put all the resistors that I need on a bit of this and have that sitting stuck in there somewhere right and then I've got nose weight in that to put in when I get round to that, I'm quite lucky. I've got things like sticky balance weights and stuff like that I can put in if I really want to. I don't know how much weight it'll need. I also have some, what used to be lead, but fishing shot that I can put in there and uh, affix with PVA on both sides. Um, so I'm going to have to weight the nose. How much I'll need to use, I don't know. I'm guessing it all. But basically the general setup of it is uh, all the wiring is going to come through the wings there. Going to have wiring coming up um, from the front uh, nose wheel landing gear uh, for the landing lights, obviously coming up this way. Right, I'm going to put all the resistors on the circuit board because it's easier, it's just a bit neater, and then I can just solder all the, the wires onto that rather than having to do heat shrink, heat shrink, individual in line. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to use a small circuit board. So I'm going to need one. Well, this is what I I'll go through this when I go into the board. Um, I can use less resistors if I wire on 6 volts, 2 bulbs in series together. I know a lot of people frown on that, but I'll go into that in a minute. Or if I want to do them all in parallel, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 resistors and possibly a diode plus a, a, wee, um, a wee chip um, for the flashing to go on. So, yeah. So I'll go into that in a minute. What I'm going to do at the moment is, right, I've kind of described who I'm going to put all. I'm going to give you a little run through about what kind of testing I do on my wee breadboard before I decide what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to pause this now, get set up, and just for the guys that are interested in the electric, right, I'm not going to go into everything, but I'm going to give you a rough idea of what I'm doing. So back in a bit. Hey. Welcome back. Right, let's see if I can get my camera at an angle that you can all see what I'm up to. Right. Um, rather than wasting all the power in my two little coin cell batteries, two of these together, wired in series, give you around about 6.5 volts. Um, I've got a power supply here that I've set at 6.5 volts to simulate um, what I'm doing on my testing on my breadboard. Good thing about this as well, it'll also tell me how many milliamps um, the circuit actually draws so I can get an idea of what power's going through the system so, whoops <laughs> apologies, you just seen my pyjamas there right, so I've got a breadboard now obviously I've not done any electricity series yet but um, let's see if this will stay where I put it it's not locking out at the moment you will comply will you? Oh, there we go, tighten that bottom one up, it's complying now, there we go, I'm not using my gimbal for a while, so this is a little breadboard, you know, you get them like these, and basically, everything, there's, there's a dividing line down the middle, right, and every one of these wee rows, every one of these five pins, they're all connected together, that's connected together in the line, that's connected together in the line, so and so and so on. You've got a negative rail, the blue one, that runs all the way up. You've got a positive rail that runs all the way up there. And the same on the other side. 
right? So that's what a breadboard does. And what we do is we add things to the breadboard um, to test things out. So this looks like a whole pile of wires at the moment. Um, <laughs> what this is simulating at the moment is landing light, right? On one wing, landing light on another wing, landing light uh, on the front wheel, landing light in the front wheel because it's two side by side, right? So that's the landing lights. The one I've still got to play about with because I'm not quite happy with intensity and stuff is, is this one that's strobing. I'll try and put my hand over it. This is for the rear nav that will go through the fibre optic. Let's just see if we can actually get this to shine, the fibre optic, just to show you what fibre optic does, right? That wee bit there. If I put that over one of the bulbs, you should see that. Whoops. You should see that lighting up at the end, yeah? And if I've got it on the flashing one, that's just where I've got to get the intensity right. Can you see that nav light's flashing? Yeah? I've got that controlled by a wee uh, one, 1 megahertz chip. Now, the reason I'm using full-size LEDs here, um, it's easier to plug them into breadboard and test instead of using the nanos. So what I'm working out here is, right, I've got all these white ones. Still not happy with that circuit yet, so I've got these white ones. I've currently got them running in parallel. Each one has its own resistor, uh, which means each one of them is getting... 6 volts, normally as a general rule of thumb, a 150 ohm resistor will drop 3 volts, okay, that's a general rule of thumb, so if you've got 9 volts, right, this is why you need to know, this is what all the voltage drop and stuff that people talk about, that's why you need to know what your LED runs at, these white ones run at 3 volts, right, 20 milliamps max, right, so it's about the voltage drop, you've got 6 volts coming through the battery, the LED uses three of that. We need to get rid of three volts, right? 150 ohm resistor will get rid of that three volts and limit it to 20 milliamps. But 20 milliamps is that bulb's maximum operating capacity. If we want it to last a while, we didn't really want to run it at 20 milliamps. We want to run it at 15 to 18, which is why instead of 150 ohm resistors on there, I've got 220 ohm resistors in there. What the 220 ohm resistor does is it still drops the 3 volts, but it lets that LED run at around about 15 to 18 milliamps, so it's not running at its maximum. Um, there are mathematical equations for it, I'm not going into that just now, but basically the two batteries joined together will give me 6 volts to that bulb, right? If I didn't put a resistor in line, that bulb's going to blow, or the LED is going to blow. So in order to limit the current, and get rid of the voltage, I need to put a resistor in line. So that uses 3 volts, and that resistor basically gets rid of the 3 volts that's extra. The drop across the bulb or LED and the resistor must add up to the battery voltage. 3 plus 3 is 6, there's no extra. When you've got extra, that's when you start blowing stuff. Now obviously, the way a resistor works is, inside it, it's like coiled up carbon, you get carbon filled ones or coiled up aluminium, it's a bit like, you know like your radiator fires that you've got an element in, the electricity's trying to get through, right, but it's got, through, got to go through a winding and winding and winding and it slows it down, yeah, that's kind of how it works, but they give off heat, yeah, minute amounts of heat, so the disadvantage is, a lot of people say, always buy your bulbs in parallel, yes, there's advantages and disadvantages, the advantage is, if one of those bulbs goes, and I'll just show you just now, this is wired in parallel, right? So one of my bulbs goes, the other ones stay on, right? And if I put that back in, uh, hopefully do it the right way, uh, that'll be, I think it's that way. There we go. So if I put that back in, that's fine. That's what happens in parallel. So if you get a bulb that goes out, or two bulbs that go out, the others will stay lit. Issue is, each one of them needs an individual resistor. They're all losing heat. It's not an efficient circuit. You've got to weigh that up against, you know, 
efficiency and things like that. The way I would probably wire those is that two in series, right? And that two in series. Problem with them being in series is if one of them goes, they both go. But at the end of the day, if one of them goes in your kit, it's going to look shit anyway. And uh, yeah. So what I'll probably do, I've got it in parallel at the moment just to test it out for brightness and everything. If I wire these two in series, instead of using a um, 220 ohm resistor, I will use a 1 ohm resistor, or a 1R, yeah, or a 0R. Well, a 0R is basically just a through link, but a 1R, and it's just to limit the current, because... If you've got two in the series, you add them up. So it's like a daisy chain. One's connected to the next. So three plus three equals six. So I don't actually have any voltage to get rid of. But to limit the current to it, to the, the correct milliamps, we still put a resistor in. Even if it's a coin cell battery. Just in case. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, I've probably bored the hell out of you. So uh, at the moment, the way I've got this running is... This little chip here, um, it's a special little one hertz chip. Sorry, this might flash out on you. Little one hertz chip. All that has coming into it is a power feed and one going to the negative rail and then the positive rail of the um, chip is shared with the positive leg of the LED and the center pin is shared with the negative leg. Now, this has got a maximum voltage of 5 volts. Now, what I've done at the moment is I've put a diode in line, which stops me shorting things out, and it, it has a voltage drop of 0.6 anyway. And I've put a resistor in um, to drop the voltage, feeding that to 5 volts. But then I'm not quite sure how that chip works. This is where I'm still learning. Because that's dropping 3. That can take a maximum of 5. I've checked out my meter and it's pulsing, so I might not actually have to put that bigger resistor in there I might get away with just putting a 220 and this is where I will play about in the breadboard right so what I'm actually up to at the moment is I've kind of got that working I've still got to work at the value I'll play with that these are all working at the moment they're in parallel I'm going to put, end up putting them in series these are the nav lights so to simulate those um, I'm going to run these on now this green and red run at 2 volts uh, now I did have the the ones out for it. <laughs> it wasn't the quarter watt ones. It wasn't those. Uh, was it two twenties? Was it two twenties? I was going to run it at, or was it three two seventy? I think I was going to run those at. So I've got two hundred and seventy ohm resistors there. That limits the voltage on these down to two volts, but also the milliamps as well that I want, and I want them to run not in the full 20, around about 15. And if I've done this right, it'll work. And if I've done this wrong, guys, you're going to see smoke and flames. As I say, this is just a bit of fun. It's not an electronics tutorial. I was bored. I was at my bench. thought I would show you a wee bit of stuff. Right, so I've got a handy wee gadget for bending my resistors. My resistor legs. And it's pink. You know, so I just put that in there like that. Bend my legs down. Do 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 do. Right, that's all. That's it all bent for going into the, the thing. And the same with that one. Do do do. I'm just rushing through this just for a bit of fun because I wanted to put a wee bit of content up on my channel and also let you see what I'm I'm playing about with this frog foot. Right, so I have got the positive leg going there. Because that's fed by that. And that's also positives going on to that one. So I need the negative leg to go an empty space. Any empty space, it doesn't matter because I need that to go to the actual. Actually, can I get that to go straight to the negative bar? That would be good. So if I go for there, yep, you will comply. I don't know if you've even seen this. Get in, sausage fingers. Right, so basically the circuit for this bulb is, that's where the plus comes in. 
it's shared along these five pins, right? Goes to the plus on the LED. The negative on the LED is then connected to 270 ohm resistor to the negative bank. So if I if I uh, switch this on, that should light up green. Yeah, 270 is maybe a bit much for it, but it's just testing the circuit. And the red one, same again. And I just need to take that for there. To the red, to the negative rail. And all this does, guys, is it lets you play about and test stuff before you actually put it in the model. So if I flick that on now, I should have my red nav light, my green nav light, my four landing lights, and a flashing one. Now, at the moment, I think the resistor I've got in there is something silly like... I'm sure I kept the bag out somewhere. It's quite a high value. Because I was kind of worried, because I don't know enough about this little one hertz chip. I was kind of worried that I might blow that chip. So what I've actually done is I have uh, created a, a voltage drop to take it down to 5 volts by using an 8.2 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, the issue with that is when I check the voltage on it, I mean I'm looking at my, my meter just now with all those lights running, I'm running... Six and a half volts and 20 milliamps for the lot. For them all. You're using a total of 20 milliamps. So if you take, oh, no, I'm just trying to remember now, not 0 0.2 amps, which is 20 milliamps, and times it by 6.5 volts on a calculator, that will tell you the wattage of it. And then you can work out what wattage it puts out and how long your batteries will last, and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not going into that. But I, I know it's running on a really, really low power consumption. It's so maybe not quite how I'm going to have it yet. Um, I'm wanting to see if I can get that 0 0.2, uh, 20 milliamps, down to a lower value by altering the circuit. And that's basically what I'm going to be playing with. So I'm not going to bore you any longer, but that's basically I'm going to be playing about with different resistors and values. Try to get that a bit brighter. Um, I'll probably try and get those a little bit brighter and I want to try and um, take them out of parallel, put them in series and see if I can get the total amount of, uh, of electricity that's being used and wasted by going away as heat to resistors uh, by minimising that. What I tend to do is, and this is what Colin is very uh, also does as well, is you're putting electricity into a model, right? Things heat up. If you just go, right, that's working, make up a circuit and jam it in your model, how do you not know that, 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 that one of these is overheating? You've got a wrong value in or something like that, and Colin calls it destruction testing. So, because that's not sitting on little batteries, I can leave that sitting for half an hour, and come back and feel and see if anything's hot. Is it, the resistor's heating up, and that way I know if there's anything going to melt inside the kit. Always, always, always run your circuit um, for a length of time to see if there's any heating up problems. Because uh, if you don't, you will only find out about it when your kit bursts into flames or starts melting. Anyway, I think I've went on long enough. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this tiny little insight into what I do of an afternoon. It's really just a little blog. Um, I mean, I've got <laughs> I've got my Peterbilt stuff all sitting there. Um, with lighting getting done and the place is a bit of a mess. I've got and I'm working on the plane, and just like, yeah, and it's just to give you a wee insight, this is more a blog, it's not a step-step video build, but this is what I'm kind of doing in an afternoon, um, so I'm progressing with this, and hopefully you enjoyed a wee bit of the electricity thing, um, still thinking on whether I should or should not do what I'm calling an electricity video, going from the basics, rather than going on to, you know, just jumping at the deep end like that, telling you what the components are and why I put them in, um, because that information is already there on YouTube, um, there's, there's lots of sites already. Uh, I mean, so I'm just I would just really be covering all ground. Not 100% sure if I, if, I, if I want to do that, but hey ho, it is what it is. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, vlog. Um, it's just me showing you kind of what I'm doing during the day. A wee bit of an update on the frog fruit and and what I'm currently working on. And next time you see this this pile of junk here 
it's probably going to be all soldered onto that. Yeah. And I probably won't need the full length because if I'm if I'm if I do go in series, I'm going to go one, two. I'll be doing the two resistors on there, uh, two resistors on there, depending on if yeah, two on there, uh, one there. So that's five. So I'm only going to have five, five down, right? So it's a wee bit that size. Uh, I've got an IC chip to put on, so that'll be the next row along. So I'm probably looking at only having a wee circuit board. Um. Although it looks that long, uh, it's only going to be about that size. And then I'll, the advantage of that is it's nice and stable and I can glue that inside the kit and uh, solder all my wires on it. And you can get these in various sizes. So yeah, I'm not going to waffle on anymore. It was just a vlog. vlog. It's going to be about an hour long and you're probably going to be bored. But <laughs> just thought... If, putting something up my channel because I'm not videoing the whole build on this so it, it just gives you an idea of what I'm up to guys that's all it is, just gives you an idea of what I'm up to and I really do need to clear my bench so yeah until the next one, catch you later guys Terry from Smooth Workshop as always, look after yourself and happy modelling bye now